another Friday and another Fusion video. Hopefully you all are ready for me to absolutely destroy a perfectly good machine sim just so we can mount a vice on the side of it so that we can use for our simpler ops inside of our machining workspace. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, as you can see, like always, we have to have Fusion 360 open in order to use Fusion 360, right? So for this instance, I'm actually gonna start with a blank file and I'm gonna switch from design over to manufacture. We're gonna go straight into our machine library because we do need a machine to mess around with. So I'm gonna go into milling and I'm gonna just grab the Haas UMC 750 that is right here inside of Fusion 360. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that. And now I'm gonna save this local as I go ahead and tear it apart and make all kinds of problems happen. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I actually want to make sure I prove that it works before I move it over to the cloud for my other guys to use. So as you can see here, we're gonna go ahead and download that simulation model. While that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys, please like, follow, and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you're liking this content. It always helps me to let me know whether or not you guys are getting any value out of this. So now that that is saved, we're gonna go ahead and edit it very quickly. And the reason why I'm gonna edit this very quickly is because I'm going to tell it that it is the side mount UMC 750, and this is just for identifying later. Again, very easy to do in this menu versus how we're gonna approach this outside of it. So that's gonna save that machine one more time. Again, don't forget to like, guys. So let's close that out, and now let's open up our data panel, and we should see our machine. If you don't see your machine in here, you're just gonna hit the refresh button, and just like that, you're gonna see that your machine has populated. Again, I'm getting the actual notification that it's fully been uploaded over here on the right. But let's get this opened up and start to tear it apart and do what we have to do. So as you can see, I just went ahead and opened it up. It brought me into manufacture. We're gonna go into the utilities menu and we're gonna visit our machine builder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn off the enclosure. So let's go ahead and turn off static. And now the very first thing I need to do is I need to move the actual B axis here on this machine so that I can set it at 90 degrees so we can come in and machine with it. So let's go ahead and say move component. I'm gonna go ahead and base this off the center of rotation here on the back side. And with that being said, I'm also gonna hold control and grab that table so we have our B and C axis all in one shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and use what I like to say, the steering wheel to rotate down 90 degrees and get that into position and hit okay. And just like that, we have basically completed the first step, which is get the machine to look like we want it at a resting position. So the next thing I'm gonna have to do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna edit the machine kinematics. And the reason why I'm gonna edit these kinematics is because I no longer wanna output a C axis when we're using this specific machine sim and when we post our G code. There's no point to spin the table if nothing's on the table. So let's go ahead and select our C axis. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and hit delete. Actually not delete, I apologize. We can go ahead and hit remove. And just like that, we removed our C axis. One other thing that we are gonna do here in a moment, we're gonna have to come back to this, is we're gonna actually have to modify our minimum and our maximums to base that off of where our home position is. So let's go ahead and hit okay here. We're gonna go up to the actual machine builder. Next, we're gonna set up our machine model. What we want is we wanna set our part location. So it's no longer over here on the center of C. I'm actually just gonna use one of these bolt holes for demonstration purposes. You all can put this anywhere and everywhere you want. Actually, let's just go, yeah, let's go off a bolt hole. It'll be a little easier here. And again, this is just where my part's initially gonna come in when we select this machine later on. Again, we're gonna hit okay, and then we're gonna take one more step further, which is gonna be, let's preview what the machine does. So, as always, we have our X axis still works perfectly fine. Our Y axis also works perfectly fine. Z, still working amazing. Now this is where it's gonna be fun, right? So in our B axis, as if you notice, if I try to come down negative 35, it just goes straight down to the right and stops. I'm also missing the fact that my platter is not moving with everything else. So again, as if we go up to 110, you have over-traveled your Haas if you didn't know that. So we need to compensate for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit close here. And again, I'm just gonna start by fixing the C axis. 
So let's go in and set up our machine model. I'm gonna go to B. Again, I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna click the C axis also, hit okay. And then let's jump back in and just check our motion. So just like that, we are now moving the actual platter with the actual swing. So that's all set. Now, let's go ahead and adjust the actual limit of what that is gonna be able to tilt. So we're gonna get, again, we're gonna go back into our edit machine configuration, go to kinematics and go to our B axis. Now we do need this, and this is gonna be a little weird, but we're basically gonna flip these numbers, right? So I'm gonna go negative 110, and I'm gonna go to a positive 35, and hit okay. Again, we go into our axis of motion, and we evaluate, so we only go up 35, and we only go down negative 110, setting that perfectly as can be. So let's go ahead and save this, so that we can give it a test run. So we're gonna go ahead and hit finish, I'm gonna hit save here, it's going to save everything, and let's pivot over to our part. Okay, with my part open, as you can see, some of you are gonna recognize this part. This is the throttle body spacer that I both did a CAD video for, and I also did a CAM video on. However, this time around, we actually have our parameter vise in here. Not to pitch you guys too much in this video, but I did just release a parameter video also building out this vise to be utilized in any three-axis situation or to be replicated on other systems. So let's go ahead and add our machine. Yes, it's a little bit of cheating when you already have your setup, but that's thanks to my vice template here. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna select our machine. So as you can see, I have my Haas side mount UMC 750. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Give it a minute here because it is having to bring in the machine. As you're seeing now, it's also gonna upload my newest version of this machine, which means where we positioned everything and stuck it on the side. I do need to put the actual vise onto that mount. This is gonna be up to all of you how you do it. I am going to use a selected point to a selected point. Again, let's just reference off of the location where I'm going to bolt this and here. And just like that, as you guys can see, it has now positioned that vise onto my actual side of my machine for me to utilize. So given I do have a tool path here, let's go ahead and go in and simulate with machine and see what this looks like. So this is usually where you're gonna find out if something's broken. And if something is broken, odds are it's because you failed to select the actual part location based on when we set up our actual machine and moved everything around. So as you can see, I actually picked the wrong point here, but let's give this a play real quick before I fix my vise. And well, just like that guys, we did actually put that vise on the side of the table the table is in a B axis zero position when we're posting this code, as you guys will see. So hold on here before we post this code. Let's go back to our setup. Let's go ahead and fix the mistake that I made, which is I don't want to use that upper edge of my vise. I would like to use the lower edge. Again, this always looks funky because you have things in the way. If you guys ever want to turn that machine off, you have full capabilities to turn your machine off as you're going. So again, we reposition that. Now that vise is sitting flat onto the machine. Looks much cleaner. Let's simulate this one more time just to double check. And it looks as good as it's gonna be. So awesome job here. We have our part in that position. We have the ability to machine off our stock. So let's go ahead and post this out. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna say post process. Because I am using that Haas Next Gen post, all the kinematics are coming through and controlling everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit post process and let's see what we get. So as you're seeing, we are successful. Keep in mind, guys, we did remove the actual C-axis altogether. So this is the most important part if you're gonna do something like this. When you go in and you set up your machine, and let's say you're using G59 for this, you're gonna wanna make sure that when you put your XYZ position in, you're also putting a B90, or you're probably gonna wanna dial indicate that, so it might have some change on the end of that 90. But that B90 is gonna be the most important part so that when you call this out inside of Fusion, it's gonna rotate up and then you're gonna work as if you're in a three axis machine right off the side of your table. And just like that, we conclude ourselves for another Fusion Friday video on doing some wild and aesthetic things like putting a vise on the side of your UMC table so that you can add your OP1 or maybe even your OP2 where you machine off your hat. That said, I didn't actually screw that up as much as I thought first time through. However, it turned out very well. If you guys have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me down below via my email or 
You could go ahead and leave a comment and I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. As always, go out, get the day done.